welcome to another edition of Cafe Day, Renee. I'm your host, James Cookville, joined once again by the star of the show, Mr. Renee Dupree. Renee, how are you doing? And you brought a friend today. Yes, I did. I'm doing well. And today is a very special day because we have a, a, a rare guest. Uh, in the business, there's, you know, a few guys that all the boys love and have, don't have a bad word to say. Uh, I'm not one of them. But my guest today certainly is uh, a good friend of mine, all Japan pro wrestling legend. He is TKO Tayo Kea. What's going on, Kea? What's up, Kea? guys? What's up, guys? Oh, that's a awesome introduction. I didn't know that, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> I calls it like it is, man. <laughs> yeah, so, good stuff. So for the fans uh, watching today who aren't aware with... Um, with K up, he is uh, was it twenty five years with All Japan Pro Wrestling? Um, I, well, I, I, twenty years I, I retired, but then I yeah, I'd, shit, I'd still go over there right after. So it's if you still count to now, what twenty seven years? Right. But, you know, wow. but there, wow. you know, yeah. And uh, for like the territory fans and fans of old school wrestling, you are the nephew of the late great uh, King Curtis Ayakea. Yeah, yeah. So what was yeah. that like growing up with uh, such a famous uncle? Uh, he, you know, it was hilarious. You know, he, um, it, like I, I, he had a, a beach den down in Waikiki Beach. So um, I worked for him from when I was like, a, you know, I think I started at 10 years old, you know, uh, carrying boogie boards on my head and stuff like that. And um, he, he'd just be yelling at me and, and snapping at me. I, I was like, when I was a kid, man, I was so scared of him. Right. You know, he'd be like, yeah. Come on, kid, I'm moving that fat ass. <laughs> like a little fat Hawaiian kid with a boogie boards on my head, you know. And uh, yeah, man, he's a, he, he was a character. Like always to, to the end, he was a character. Was right. Awesome. Yeah. So um, what age did you start uh, going over to Japan? 18. Um, shit, I, I graduated from high school. And I was, my whole plan was to go to college, um, play football, small college, and I put in my paperwork and everything. And then um, uh, Kurt was telling me, oh, you got a passport? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Um, he goes, oh, well, well, you know, Giant Bob was coming out here. I gave him your profile and everything. And, um, you know, he, it'd be good if you meet up with him. You might have a you know, chance and stuff like that. And it was actually Lord uh, Blair's, Lord right. James Blair's. Yeah. He made the introduction. So, yeah, three weeks after I got, graduated from high school, I went and had lunch with him. And then uh, it was him, Kyohei. I remember, you know, Kyohei, yeah. the, the referee. Yeah. Yeah. And this other guy, Ryu, who was like, uh, he went over with Noah after and then Mrs. Baba. Okay. And uh, yeah, man, the, I walk in the room, it's, you know, the giant of a man and super nice. And uh, he was like, uh, I see your profile. <laughs> and uh, he was like, uh, you want to wrestle in Japan? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he goes, uh, and then after, you know, I talk for everything. He's like, uh, when, when, do you, when would you want to come? And I was like, shit, whenever you have me. He goes, I leave in three days. Wow. And I was like, well, yeah. You know, I just graduated from high school, man. I didn't, I didn't know shit right. shit. And, right. And then, uh, yeah, so I, they took me shopping, like, the next day, bought me some clothes and stuff. And then... Uh, Three days later, man, I was in Japan. I, I, yeah, I didn't know. Anything. Like my uncle, like he didn't talk to me about wrestling. I mean, we talked about wrestling, but didn't talk about wrestling, you know? Right, right. And then, uh, like I remember, Baba, like he's we're in the airport, yeah, to Japan. He looks over at me. He goes, "Oh, uh, kid, you, you know how to bump? Like, how to what? <laughs> how to bump?" And I was like, oh, "Bump? And you how to bump? How to fall?" And I was like, like a judo roll? And then he was like, ha, 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 okay, okay. And it's so bad, yeah, I went to Japan. I, oh, yeah, that's all I did was bump. <laughs> right? So <laughs> you spent time in the dojos before you actually debuted, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was in dojo six, six, seven months. Is that straight or in? Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, yeah. seven months. Uh, I was in, and they train, and, we, and which usually, like, Japanese boys like they would uh, be 
seven, eight, eight months to like a year before you debut, usually. Right. But I guess, I don't know, he was, he was, he was pushing for me to debut and stuff, so. Right. Yeah. So explain to everyone just like a typical day in the dojo and the training and, and what a young boy, that's like the, the, the rookies, that's what they're called, yuck boys. A typical yeah. day in a young boy's life. Yeah, man. It's So I, like I always explain like, you got Japanese culture and then you got it like wrestling is a culture within a culture, man. Right. And, uh, yeah, you go over there and you're just, as a young boy, you just, the, the go do it guy, you know, you, whatever the older guy says to do, you, you go do. Right. So, you know, you wake up morning, you wake up before everybody else, you, you clean the house, you get things ready. And then so typical day there, if we're training, would be I uh, wake up in the morning clean before the older guys, um, and then every you know get everything ready, uh, put all your gear on and stuff, and then go go to the dojo and like warm up, train. Training to be maybe two and a half hours. Kind of depends. Like it just maybe um, sometimes longer. You know, um, a lot of bumping, a lot of calisthenics, right. and then. Um, usually take a break and then um all the young boys uh, run over and you can't shower or whatever you, you start you start making lunch right. which is usually like chunko nabe and I then love yeah chunko's awesome right oh it's big old hama. yeah, yeah <laughs> <chunko's> awesome, <man. laughs> wow. so so for the fans who don't know what chunko is it's like uh what we call in north america boiled dinner and it's delicious it's like uh vegetables some sort of meat usually pork or chicken uh, tofu and then there's yeah. different different kind of soups so sometimes it's miso chonko sometimes it's uh curry chonko anyway right. just yep yeah man yeah i mean you make it a, like it seems like a thousand different ways right they can make it right but it's um yeah my my favorite was like it actually was hummus man it was like you do like a spicy uh meatball chonko yeah spicy miso yeah yeah man that was my favorite um but yeah, anyway, and then usually like you, we eat, I mean, they'll, you, you serve us all, you serve, yeah, that sounds weird, service, uh, you serve all the older guys, um, yeah. their tonko and everything. So you're like, you know, waiting like a waiter on the side, you're, if they want more rice, more, more to drink, yeah. you know, you're there. And then after everybody's done eating the older guys, then you get to eat, right? Eat like the, like whatever's left over. I mean, there's always food left over and stuff. Oh yeah. Cause they cook it in a huge pot, right? So you're right. Yeah, big pot, like 20 cups of rice, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. And, uh, usually, like, sometimes I'll throw in some sausages next to it or something else, right? Right. So, yeah. So, you did, you did six or seven. Uh, who was your um, your senpai, the senior, like, the head head wrestler who was coaching at that time? Coaching was, was Kobashi. Kobashi. Just the Kobashi, yeah. 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 yeah and, man, he was just... He did. It wasn't like he was just barking orders and not doing anything. He he did everything right like, that, you, that you did. So right, yeah, yeah, and for, right. yeah, it's, 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 and back then they wouldn't let you drink water too. They it was just right. like yeah, like, like maybe maybe once in the training session they'll let you drink water. Um, like and that was usually like in the summertime. Right, but yeah, man, they, they wouldn't let you drink water. Like thinking back on it. This is like holy shit, man! It's, it's just that old school way of thinking, right? But that yeah. and that that would weed out the the weak from the strong, and right, and, yeah, for right. sure. And it, you have guys leave. When I was in there, I swear there was forty guys maybe that came through, and then like like a lot of them were like or like uh, you go to sleep, and because you, like you you have like the upstairs, you kind of share the room with the new guys, yeah, and um. You'd wake up in the morning and guys would just be gone. Like all their shit is just packed and they just right. woke up in the middle of the night and just snuck out, you know? Just take out, or, right? Yeah. And then, or another, just, just say, like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. I, I don't want to do this anymore. It's almost like military when guys go AWOL, right? Right. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so you did six or seven months of training and then uh, mm -hmm. finally debuted. Who was your first mm -hmm. opponent, if you can remember? Uh, Shiga Kintaro. Yeah, this guy named Chiga. Yeah, he he was uh he was like my direct older senpai, right there, and he was awesome guy, great guy. Um, but he was he was like Mister Baba's uh, Shindeshi, his young boy. Okay. So he was always with Mister Baba, and then, so I always helped along. If we were around Mister Baba, like we we're always like the the helpers and stuff. 
Right. But yeah, I debuted with uh, with Shiga. Right. So, yeah. so I mean, um, you wrestled in North America just periodically, right? Just uh, maybe a few shots here and there. Yeah, like, only a few times. And it was like the major one was like I guess like MLW. Right. At that right. time, I did a few with them, and then yeah, it really didn't wrestle. Like I, I should like thinking back on my career, like I should have pushed a lot more to come to the states more, and like I would have learned a lot more and stuff. But I, I don't know. I think I was just kind of set up there, and I didn't move out of there. Yeah, because that's what a, uh, a lot of uh, young Japanese wrestlers do. Once they get a few years under the belt, they'll go to North America or Europe to go on excursion to get more experience yeah. and basically make their name bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Right, correct. Right. Yeah. So, um, like, a lot of fans that watch this are, like, you know, North American fans that like to watch the WWF and, and stuff like that, but, you know... How many, I mean, there's so many Americans that would go work for All Japan and New Japan. I mean, Christ, all the big names went through there. So you've, I mean, you've wrestled some of the biggest names in in the industry, right? Yeah, I had some awesome opportunities. Like, that, that was a cool part, man. It was just wrestling, you know, uh, different styles, different, you know, different guys. You know, you get Mexican guys that come through there. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, all the, you know, the Canadian guys, of course. Uh, uh, English guys like uh, Johnny Johnny Smith, right? Man, he was he was like oh, he was awesome, man. Right. Russell Wynn and even like learn from his, his style and stuff like that. Uh, the Danny Crawford, yeah, Indians, you know, oh man, is this those guys? It, yeah, he was hilarious, man. He was he was my favorite guy to watch. We we did an interview. Uh, I sent it to you. I don't know if you had a chance to watch it with Phil. Uh, Danny Crawford. You know, actually, I did it, man. I, I apologize. Yeah, I, I didn't watch it, but go yeah. ahead. Um, so yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I loved, uh, my first time meeting Kea was in 2008. I was working for a company called Hustle and then, uh, I was over there for three weeks and then between the shows, they gave me a week with all Japan and that's when I first met Kea and, uh, he's one of the very few guys, uh, that I actually keep in contact with. And, um, yeah, that, that, that one week tour out changed my life because i that's when i really fell in love with japan uh touring with you guys then we had sponsors that would take us out and show us a good time at night which was the best yeah, right awesome yeah. and uh so tell us about some of the names some of the some of the great you know um north american wrestlers that you've been in the ring with over in all japan shit um i mean goldberg was like the big you know the big time guy you know that i wrestled <laughs> with and then uh that was that was a trip. I mean, because the whole I mean, he, he was cool and he was nice and everything. And but it was just a, a trip like how the office decided to make money. You know, they, they spent all this money to bring him in and it was just kind of like a, a weird setup, like how um I mean he just came there. They were like building myself in Kojima at the time. So um big show, he comes in and um yeah, two days at the at the Budokan at that time, and right. uh, he comes in. And we're they're building at that time. All Japan was building myself and Kojima, you know, like the next big stars. And um, yeah, he comes in and squashes both of us. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> like the him the first day, me the second day, or however it was. Yeah, no, I, I was the first day. But, so you yeah, told anyways. the story when you walked into the locker room. He was sitting there with his lawyer, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, he had like a lawyer and, and a manager, man. But I mean, shit. I mean, good for him. He was making, he was killing money, you know. He's right. I, I think he got paid a good amount, but yeah, it was just, and right. he was cool, like I said, but yeah, yeah. Was, right. Yeah. Well, it is what it is, right? No, it is what it is, but, but that's amazing. I'm here, I can tell a, a cool story about it, you know, like years <laughs> later. He was cool, man. <laughs> um, shit. Uh, let me see who else is, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess who's the names guys like Stan Hansen, but like, you know everybody. You know that's like the next generation of Stan Hansen, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Renee, Renee Dupree, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say job boys. I said stars, dude. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So people, I would like to talk about Kay, and obviously I'm from the UK, and this would have been before your time, but. The British Bulldogs, Davy Boy and Dynamite. What's their right. legacy in Japan? Because that's where they hit it big in Japan. So, 
does that legacy still exist today while oh, you yeah. still yeah for, uh, for sure like D- davy dynamite i mean yeah they're always huge in japan um I know this is their, of course, their appearance, their work style. I mean, especially dynamite, you know, dynamite with all um, the tiger masks. Like, I, I'm still, still to this day, like, uh, like a tiger mask, like dynamite versus a tiger mask would pop up. And yeah. that still gets my rocks off, man. It's it's yeah. still like fun to watch them wrestle, yeah. man. It's, it's, and even like a lot of times it's like the same high spot too, but bro, it's still, it still catches you. Like, it's still awesome. Yeah. It's so badass, man. I, I firmly believe that those matches will revolutionize the business, like yeah. in many ways, especially for smaller wrestlers, right? Right, right, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. yeah, man, everybody try to emulate them, you know, um, yeah. and try to keep up with that that work pace too. Right. Those guys are, yeah, they're just so smooth, you know. Yeah. So let's talk about your uncle a bit more. Like I was watching old tape from Japan with your uncle. I think he was there with Hiro Mitsuda. Maybe wrestling against Hiro Matsuda? Probably, and yeah. I, I finally noticed that, holy shit, that's the guy that Bruiser Brody copied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Haas, yeah. Haas, Haas, and yeah, the different right, matters. Right, right. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah um, I guess that was just, I don't know, it's kind of his underling, but I don't know, I guess from what I understand, you know, uh, from what I'd hear the stories, it's like, yeah, um, he helped him out a lot. Like Curtis right. did, and uh, yeah, and I guess kind of emulated his his style, and you know, and and, and like the the forehead and everything, and like right, the, yeah, just that wildness and stuff like that. Man. Right. Well, it worked. Yeah. So, you know, he, no, he, he did. He did. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. So, uh, what's um, I'm trying to think of some questions to ask you. You got any funny stories about nights out in Japan that you're, you can say, and you know. It won't get you in trouble. Oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> shit, I'm trying to, you know, I, I just haven't talked about it in a bit, so it's just not nothing popping up in my head. I don't know if you sh- we start talking about something and something will pop up. Right. Um, I don't know, like funny stories, and then, then there's like, well, I, I remember a story like it's not really funny, but when uh, I think I told you about this when when the um, I was, it was Taka Taka Michinoku. Right. So hey, let's let's go out tonight. We're up in this we're up north and um I forget it's some small arena. He said, I'll go tonight, sponsor take us out to go eat. Right. Said, yeah, sure, sure. So I was on early and it was it was actually it was Dilo, Boo Boo Cannon, and who was the other it might have been Eki too, who was maybe uh, Umaga. Right. And uh some other guy. So anyway, we're all supposed to go go eat with this this guy. And then I finished my match early, so I go out there. I go out to the bus, and I'm kind of cruising out there, listening to some music. They kind of take, you know, just messing around. And I noticed like the show is being let out and stuff like that. So, um, you know, people are walking by the bus and stuff like that. But then I hear some pop, pop, pop. I was like, "What the fuck is that? Sound like fireworks?" And I was like, "Sound like a gunshot too." And I'm just thinking to myself, didn't think anything of it. Taco comes on, and then. Um, all the other boys come on, they talk to him, like, he answers his phone, he's like, you know, like, huh, huh, huh? So he goes out of the bus, and then he comes back on the bus, and he goes, oh, tonight, boys, uh, dinner canceled. Sponsor gets shot outside. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, what? And then, uh, and then I was like, what? And then I guess he was, like, some big-time gangster. And then um, some, yeah, he just got taken out. Like, he was watching the show, and he just went out to his car, and just got... He got capped like right in his head. Wow! <laughs> so this was, was, was this like in Hokkaido area? No, it was up north somewhere. It was in Hokkaido. I don't think it was Hokkaido. No, it wasn't Hokkaido. I don't know. Or was it? No, 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 no. I don't think it was Hokkaido. Okay. But yeah, anyway, it was just like, and all the boys, like everybody's taking it personal. Like they're gonna come after us. <laughs> so they're <laughs> they're like, um, um. Skip this town. We're going to the next next town. We, we gotta find another hotel. Like they're gonna come and kill all of us. But oh. wow. yeah, everybody was freaking out. But, but yeah, that was. Uh, I remember that night. Right. But yeah. Not, of course, nothing happens, man. Fuck. Like, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, but yeah. Initially, when I was, I left the United States. I just wanted to go learn a different style and go to Japan and, uh, you know, just change sceneries for a little while but after um 
after being there for, well, like I said, after that all Japan tour, I was hooked, man. And it's like, you know what? I can make a good living here and it's so much fun. And that's when I fell in love with Japan. And you're a big, uh, a big part of that, you know, because oh, cool, man. just hanging out with you was, and like I said, everybody has ever met Kay and all the wrestlers, uh, they, they don't have a bad thing to say about him because he's pure 100% class and just a great guy to be around. Thanks, bro. And, uh, Thanks, yeah. Bro. So uh, uh, what what's your life like now? Are you officially retired or are you still on call? Yeah, I'm pretty much retired, man. I, I do, I'm an electrician now. No uh, shit! Yeah, man. Awesome. It's like, what a what a change of life. Uh, so I, I, I'm working as an electrician yeah. and I also work down uh, at the... Uh, down at the docks or um uh at the harbor but, uh, that's what uh don morocco was doing too right? yeah same company yeah okay yeah so, and he, he's uh, retired uh, now too he doesn't do the docks anymore yeah he's retired okay yeah okay is your cousin retired now mike i presume so uh prince ik he, he had a really good run in wcw uh curtis's son um, oh that was a that was a, that was a gimmick guy he, he was in he was in a real yeah you know, oh, right. just like a yeah 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 oh he just took the name yeah 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 it was uh, I thought he was. was when Curtis was <laughs> Curtis was doing the thing with um with WCW I just, yeah I gotta clear this off my phone um yeah when uh would call Kevin Kevin because so Curtis and Kevin Sullivan were really good friends huh. Okay. And then so Kevin brought him in and then all kind of stuff. And then, um, yeah, and then he just um, named that guy, which I, I think they, I heard that guy hit like hit a lottery or something. Yeah, man. He won like millions <laughs> on the lottery. Yeah. 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 Maybe he should be my cousin. Shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, let's talk about, uh, you know, Japan's a very physical style, uh, much more than in North America. And there's always injuries that occur. Uh, what's some of you, some of your worst injuries that you've had in your career? Oh man, shit. Um, uh, of course, uh, concussions. Uh, my knees. Like I, I've had, uh, I've had uh, both my ACLs replaced. Um, this is like wear and tear. And then um, my low back. Like I, I threw. What did I, say? I had a match in Corgan Hall. I uh -huh. think somebody came down on my back and it was just like somebody and then oh no actually I was fine. I got up and I jumped off the apron and it felt like somebody stabbed me in the back and then uh um uh, yeah it was just like I had to walk down that Corgan Hall stairs. Yeah, yeah. And then they were trying to interview me after and I, I couldn't talk. So I was like, oh shit. And then uh <laughs> I remember this. So we go into the the dressing room and I'm like my back is just like oh it's just like somebody like twisting a knife like right in my spine and then um at the same time, I think like New Japan guys were, were coming inside there because they had to wrestle that same hall that day. And we were like the earlier match. Right. And then uh, I don't know if you remember this, Renee, but uh, they'd have like a, a suppository for a pain pill. Yes. Yeah. And then they were like, yeah, like, yeah, this, shove this, put this suppository, you know, shove this, put this, the, it looked like a bullet, right? Right. Like, yeah. Put this in your ass, you know, help kill the pain. And I'm like, what? I've never done it before. I've always right. seen it. I was like, and the, the room is like crowded with guys. I was like, "There's no way I'm shoving that thing in my ass with, <laughs> with, all, with all you guys here." They're like, no, 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 you kill pain, kill pain. I was like, "Fuck you, I'll take the pain." And then uh, I was like, "There's no way, there's no way I'm shoving my ass." And then so anyway, they finally take me to the, the hospital, and the, the doctor told me the same thing. I was like, "Oh fuck, okay." So I'm like, get out of the room, and then I'm over there dealing my, my my ass over here. Um, so. <laughs> So that's one, and then I got my teeth knocked out with a uh, Kojima. Kojima, right? Chair. Yeah, with the chair, and it it busted my my two front teeth backwards, so you could see like the roots. Oh, uh, that that was the most like that was the thing because like I never had braces or anything with my teeth. And, yeah, I had to get my whole top um, area like wired. So and basically, what happened is it was it a double chair shot, one from front, one from the yeah. back? Just, yeah. And, he got your Kojima got you right in the teeth. Imagine that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the bar, geez. the bar hit me like right there, man. And it was just like, and the, it just started gushing out. And man, I could feel like I remember I went, I went down for a second, and I, I rubbed my, my tongue and my front teeth, and I, was like, I couldn't feel my teeth. I was like, <laughs> so, I was so pissed, man. It right. Was like, oh, I was so pissed. 
So you told me like you uh, when you were a young kid, you had to go to counseling for your temper, right? Because you had a really bad temper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you contain yourself after he like basically knocked your teeth out? I don't out? know, man. I think as I got older, man, I think I, I like I, I know I don't know why why I didn't like just beat his ass. I could beat his ass, you know. But I, I don't know why. Like I just I don't know. It's just like I kind of just like. He was like almost like crying, like with like his tears in his eyes, and he felt bad. Right, but man. I don't know. I just like I, like I wanted to like smash him, you know. But I was just like, ah, I don't know. I just kind of let it go. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I should have. Yeah, should have, could have, would have, but uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't. Well, me, man, me uh, and uh, oh, sorry, this last question. Uh, me and Renee was talking about it uh, a couple of weeks ago, okay, but what's your thoughts on the uh, New Japan and uh, nowhere? Uh, cross promotion what's coming up for Wrestle Kingdom and after uh, obviously you've wrestled in Japan for over 20 years as you've mentioned but what's mm -hmm. your opinion on this and can, do you imagine it's only good for Japanese wrestling yeah it did, it, um, creates interest it's, it's fun right it's fun to right. watch and yeah man yeah. but they, they've done that a lot throughout the years where they have international right. uh, feuds and stuff right right they did that yeah from, way, uh, from back in the day they'd do it and then actually I was a uh, it was when Muto came over with uh, with us, so I guess I was the first guy to do it. Where like um, I had the belt because we were the tag champions in all Japan, right? And we went over and, and wrestled against um, Fujinami, Fujinami and um, Nishimura. Uh -huh. So we got the we had the tag belts from New Japan. So we were the it was our first time. Uh, yeah, I had like both belts. Wow! We the first to do that. So wow. that, and that was a big cross promotion at, at that time, and that was because that was after the split with all Japan. So right. it was it was like it was big news and it was fun, man. It was fun like wrestling for both companies, you know. Right. Do their tour and do our tour and yeah, it's a good time. And especially financially, right? That would be yeah, official yeah, for sure. So you spent a lot of time in, in Japan with Doctor Dead Steve Williams. Uh, you got any right. great stories about Steve Williams? <laughs> Shit, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good times, and because and he he um he bought a, a condo in in Maui too, so. We come over um, uh, this way, um, you know, because I'm in Maui now. I don't know if you guys, um, the other people know that. So, um, uh, yeah, man, uh, was some good times with Doctor. Man, he he was fun, man. He was just like, <laughs> I remember him we went to some strip. Uh, rest his soul. <laughs> 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 we did some like a strip bar. I remember him like. Power bombing a stripper. Like, what? <laughs> it's like, uh, was she Japanese? No, no, no. She was like, like it was like, oh, it was like in uh, um, in Osaka. Like, it was called Club La Chante. Okay. And they, it was like they, so they had like a lot of foreign girls there, like right. a lot of like Russian, Brazilian, like mixture. Right. And then um, you know, they they had like couches, and they they, I think he put like the couches together. Like slapping them together and like just boom. <laughs> I mean, of course, he didn't bring them all hard, but yeah. <laughs> uh, then, uh, so how did he yeah. not get arrested over something like that? It's Japan, dude. You I don't know. And uh, the other one he used to do it was so awesome. God rest his soul. But <laughs> <laughs> he used to he suppress them, right. suppress the girls, you know, and he catch the six pack on on one side, right? The six pack, yeah. And then uh, <laughs> so, but I remember him doing it to some. uh some reporter, Japanese woman reporter, but yeah. Oh my god. Oh, Brother, when, he, knuckle deep. <laughs> <laughs> when he had him up in position for the power bomb, how long did he have him in position for? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It takes yeah, he had to hold it for the for the pictures, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay, uh, I don't want to take any more of your time because I know you're busy and you got stuff to do, but uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on and uh thank you. I just wanted to tell you in person, man, that uh, uh, being on tour with you at All Japan definitely changed my life uh, awesome. for the better. And, yeah, uh, me too. Man. Always, Same here. You've always been a great friend to me, and uh, and uh, hopefully this year, if this coronavirus shit goes away, I'm going to head down to Maui because my wife's been bugging me for those Hawaiian cookies. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah, man. yeah. yeah. For real, man. Be fun, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, I, yeah, I look forward. Man, I'll be waiting here, man. Uh, yeah, come on down. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the beer cold, bud. Yeah, yeah.
All right. Is that it? James, you got anything else? No. Uh, thanks, uh, Kay. I had a really good time listening to the story, especially uh, Steve Williams' power bomb in the stripper. So that sounds pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, congratulations. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Before we go, did you ever hear the story when he uh, basically won a chicken fight with a, with a truck? Just him against the truck. I don't know who he was with, but he was outside a bar and he got in some sort of scuffle with uh, someone. So the guy jumped into his truck and he went to run over Steve Williams. Steve Williams just stood there and he's like, bring it on. And the guy actually moved, even though he was in the truck. <laughs> Steve Williams actually stood him down <laughs> while the young guy was driving the truck. <laughs> I don't so, know, man, but yeah, he, he, guys, he's, just, he's a powerful man, man. Like, yeah, 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 I wouldn't mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, thanks for coming on and yeah, everyone, thanks for watching the show. Really hope you've enjoyed this and yeah, uh, catch us in the next episode. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, Cafe Day Renee. Uh, please hit subscribe and like and yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bonsoir. Bonsoir.